Okay, so when you're designing parts and designing systems, it doesn't have to be as complicated as a whole entire race car and the fluid dynamics that go on with that whole entire system. It could be something as simple as this thing, for example. What this is, is it's a, an elbow that's uh, designed for a rebreather system. What that is, it's just a piece of dive gear. And this is a, a new design, it's proprietary to my company, but uh, I'm going to let you guys in on it and show you just a little bit of the parts and features and how it works and how we've analyzed this to make sure that when we build them, they work and they work properly and first time. So here we are, we've got the, just a part that's uh, suctioned off just so we can see inside it. We've got a Schrader valve, that's basically the same thing that's in your valve stem to your tire that keeps the, uh, the air in. So the way this system works to let the air in you have a little push button down here that we're able to push and that activates this button here. This piece right here between this gray piece and this uh, pinkish piece traps a fabric cloth and that seals around there. This is uh, a part that spins off this this per, uh, bluish part spins off that allows you to take the uh, this collar off. So. With this system, we're routing gas into this union right here that goes through this hole on down this passageway into this valving system. Let me see if I can grab that and spin it around for you. Into this valving system and then out into the rebreather system. So some of the details here aren't that important. These little grooves right here are for O-rings. But I wanted you to get a basic understanding of what this thing looks like. We'll take away the section so we can see the whole part. And so we have a gas passage that's coming in right here and it's spiraling around. So on both sides we've got the gas that comes through. Let's highlight that area right there and let's flip it around and see if we can see that highlighted section. And it's kind of hard to see in there but let's highlight that. So we've got this little piece right there highlight. Let's see if we can see that inside of there. There it is, right there. So it's not a straight passageway through. But we designed this part so that it would flow properly. Well, it also has to be strong. So how do we know if it's going to be strong? Well, first we test that. So we're going to open that part up. Here I've got it. This is just the removed part. Sorry about that. This is just the removed part. And we've got openings where the valving system fit into that before. What we're going to do is we're going to go into Cosmos Works, which is a finite element package. Now I've already previously meshed this part, and to show you what a mesh looks like, we'll just open that up. Uh, show mesh. This may take a second just for it to generate, just so it ha you have the graphic. And the way finite element analysis works is that we break up the whole entire part into small little chunks that we can push on like little small springs. Each one of these little triangles ends up, if you push on there, it has a resultant force on all these other little triangles. And so this is the way mathematically we're able to model complicated geometry. We simply wrap a mesh around it and extrude that mesh on through. So the whole entire part is meshed with these tetrahedrals. Next we apply let me show you how we've applied show all. On this, we're restraining the base. We're putting a force on the one end. We're trying to lift up on it with about 100 pounds of force. The other thing we've done is we've applied a pressure. Since we're bringing pressure into this, I've put pressure inside this port right here, indicating with these red arrows. That pressure goes all the way down inside here as well. So we've got our restraint, which is that little clip ring that we attach the whole thing to that base with. We're applying a force, we're applying a pressure. And after we get done, we can know, we can, we can see what the net effect is on that part. It's going to take a second to calculate. Let me hide the arrows because that's a little distracting. And so with this, 
is showing is it's the von Mises stresses. So you're looking at basically the, the concentration of stresses in the part. And all this is showing right now is just the outside surfaces. But we can see that we go up to 6 to the, the third power <coughs> times 10 to the third. To really get an understanding of what's going on in this part, we need to dive inside it just a little bit. The way we can do that is we can do something called isoclipping. What this allows us to do is to take away the stresses and see where we have our highest concentration. It kind of allows us to basically peer into the part and see where the highest areas, where the areas where the highest concentration of force would be. These are the areas that would weaken first or fail first. And so right here, pulling up on it right there, we see that we're getting an increased concentration of stresses right here. Now, one of the concerns is putting the snap ring in there, is that going to cause a failure? Well, it's definitely cre creating a point where there's a higher stress level right there. We also have one right at the crease right there. So how do we know if this thing's going to fail? Well, let's look at the design check. Typically with in engineering, you want to design parts so that you, that you have a minimum safety factor of about three. So in other words, you want to make sure that the part will survive at least three times the normal loading that it will ever see. With this right here, this graph with color shows us that we have a high area, hot area right in here. And so we're looking at that, and we see that we, if you can zoom in, we have basically 2.95. We have at almost a three times safety factor at that area right there. The rest of the part is all well below that. So, moving on. Now that we know that the part is strong enough to withstand the duty that we're going to expose it to, how do we know if it's going to flow properly? Well, I've run the analysis the flow analysis on this same part. So what I did is I, I extracted the fluid volume from this part, moved it into my computational fluid dynamics program. We ran the analysis on that. So this right here is showing a surface. We're, we're running a flow through this at 40 liters per minute air at atmospheric pressure. This surface that we see wrapping around here is the passageway that the air would travel. And this is an ISO surface that shows where the pressure or where the, uh, the gas flow would be at least one meter per second. But now we're coloring this to indicate where we have the areas of highest turbulence. We have turbulent kinetic energy. This is showing us where we have a large amount of turbulence. So we've got one little pinch area right there that might be due to it restricting down right in this area. Now this would be an area where we could actually look at improving it, but let's look at the flow lines just to make sure that there's not a big problem there. So we're going to turn off, well, let's leave that on for just a moment, we'll run the, the flow streams through it. This may take a second to calculate. <coughs> 